I'm Mark Schutte with Stockton Outfitters. We're down here in southwestern Montana doing a little bit of spring bear hunting. Free chase black bear hunting is one of the most challenging of all hunts in my opinion. A lot of guys can go out and sit over a pot of soup. A lot of guys can do that, put your tree stand up, sit 20 yards from a pot of soup and, and wait for the bear to come to you. You know, uh, not everybody can go out with dogs and tree them and, and do that, right? That's that's a little bit more challenging. But, but again, uh, you know, free chase hunting like we have here in Montana is something special in my opinion. It's the challenge of the hunt that I think personally uh, makes it a value to myself and also to our clients. You know, it's a challenge. It's There's no gimme. There's no easy sit there and watch five bears come into the same donut pile uh, or, nah, that one up in the tree, he's not big enough for me. Uh, you know, this is a challenge. You're going to come out. You know, on a free chase hunt, say, say it's a five-day hunt, you're going to see anywhere from two to maybe eight, ten bears in a week. But you're going to work for them. And, and that's what I love about the hunt is it is. It's one-on-one, -on -one, you and this bear. You have bear in his country and, and, and you, and you try to figure them out. Now, there's three different tactics that are very, very common for free chase black bear hunting. You know, the first and most obvious is spot and stock. Now I can sit here and talk about spot and stock tactics all I want to. But the reality of things is the only way to learn about it is to do it. So we're going to go ahead and watch Skippy Sims and Travis Seacrest spot and stock. A very, very nice cinnamon bear. Um, we started out first night. Uh, we slid into a little park up there, uh, moved around a little bit, made our first set glass for a while. Uh, the wind was blowing a little bit, so we made a move into a little quieter spot, and we slid in, uh, let everything calm down for a few minutes, and then we started in with some, some gentle boar grunts, uh, welcoming grunts, uh, just let, letting any bears in the country know that there's a, there's a safe spot to come out and feed. Um, as luck would have it, about 15 minutes before the end of shooting light, we had a little bear sneak out of the trees uh, right on the other side of the meadow from us. Uh, pretty far shot from where we were set up, so we made a little bit of a move, closed the distance down. It was still not an easy shot. It was still quite a ways out. Um, we took a chance. We shot at him a couple of times. Uh, he managed to slip by us that time. And we slipped out of there, um, you know, pretty happy with, with the overall experience and hoping we'd get another shot. We let that metal cool down for a day, um, went and hunted some other areas, looked at some other country and decided uh, we were going to slip back in there and try it again. Um, not the following morning, but the morning after that. <laughs> Got him. Tactic number two, ambush. And it's not as easy as it sounds. <laughs> Basically, when you're out in the woods and you're, you're looking around, we're looking for a lot of stuff. We're looking for scat. We're looking for rolled rocks and rolled logs. And we're looking for just about anything that tells us a bear's in the area. Uh, after a while, and you, you search the area out, you can somewhat begin to put a pattern to a bear. 
You know, if you find a spot and there's five different piles of scat all aged a little differently, uh, you know, that's a spot that a bear comes back to repetitively. If you look at the area and the terrain and you look at that uh, green grassy patch that it looks like he might be eating in or, or that hillside that's just buried with old logs that are all rolled up, well, we're beginning to pattern the bear. So our second tactic is ambush. We ambush or we still hunt these bears. Once we determine that a bear's using an area over and over and over, we set up in that area. Uh, sometimes we'll throw in a little bit of calling, but most times set up and wait for that bear to make a mistake. When he makes a mistake, it's all over. Let's watch Kareem and his father as they sit in wait to ambush a beautiful blonde bear. Kareem Shea from New York. This man's a little bit handicapped. He had an accident when he was young. Uh, lost one of his limbs, but he's got uh, a replacement or a prosthetic limb. And, and Kareem called me up out of New York looking for a spring bear hunt. And Kareem wanted a tough one. He didn't want it easy. He wanted a tough hunt. So. By golly, we hooked him up, and, and uh, Kareem and I went out, and, and uh, I'd had a little bit of scouting in me, so I did know where a few of these bears were at. Uh, the previous couple of weeks, I'd found an area where there was scat just galore, scat along a green meadow, and, and uh, you know, I, I was intrigued to get back up in there. So Kareem and I went out the first night, and, and we didn't have much luck. We went out. You know, the, the second day, and, and by God, we found some more scat, found some areas, uh, and slid up into this high alpine meadow along in the brand new clear cut. And, uh, you know, the clear cut looked good, but that, that there was just this green patch of grass right along the tree line. Uh, this is early season. You know, there's not much green grass out there right now. We had plenty of scat. Uh, we crawled in there, oh, I'd say 7 o'clock in the morning and sat down and I let out a couple of squeals, I did. I, I used a cub bear distress call, let out a couple calls, and uh, happened to be looking around a little bit and noticed a cow elk on the other hillside. Uh, this cow and calf were out there, and, and uh, by golly, this cow's running up the hill, she's running down the hill, she's running up the hill, and the calf's following around, and I thought, geez, I gotta go see what the heck's going on. So I slide out of there and I'm back on the other side of the mountain. I got the glasses up and I'm doing the thing. And uh, I get this feeling, you know the feeling. I get that feeling, I start hearing squirrels behind me and the squirrels are chatter, chatter. I'm like, oh, I better get back down there. Well, by golly, I sneak over the hill and uh, I look up with my glasses and, and Kareem and his father, his father joined us too. Kareem, is, he's locked and loaded, ready to go. And all of a sudden, he squeezes off. Boo! Well, I'm looking like crazy. I'm looking all over the place for that bear. But well, there he was, laying right there in the middle of that green strip, right where I told Kareem it'd be. Uh, and it was fantastic bear, beautiful time, very, very exciting. Unfortunately, folks, the camera was with me filming the elk on the other side of the mountain. And I did not get to kill on film, but we do get to see Kareem do his thing. Congratulations, Kareem. Thank you. Where'd he come out at? He came out over there. Um, and he walked this way. He was eating along this grass. Just kind of ate his way yeah, down. Yeah, he was eating down there and then kind of worked his way down there. Fantastic. You heard all those squirrels over there, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, was, were, we were back there. We shot him down here. It was a good walk in here this morning, wasn't it? It was a little tough. Uh, what did you think when you first came out? I, I didn't know what it was at first. Um, I thought it was an elk at first because it was kind it was of an elk? yeah, it was far away and brown. So I just I just kind of put my binoculars up and thought, like, let me take a look at this elk. And I was like, holy crap! Our third tactic, and probably the most exciting of all North American big game hunts, is calling for black bear. 
So how do you begin calling bears? Where do you learn it? What, what, what happens? There's millions of companies out there, not millions, but hundreds of companies, to make hundreds of types of calls. You've got your rabbit calls, you've got cub bear distress calls, you've got fawn bleats, you've got bear calls, you've got uh, you name it, everything out there. Uh, years ago, when I learned how to, how to call bear, uh, we started with something real simple. It just took last year's elk read, popped it in your mouth, and by God, you're calling bears. Every one of these calls tends to work for us, whether that be a rabbit call, a rodent call, a cub bear call, uh, and, and uh, other calls like sow calls and, and boar calls later on in the season. But there is a point and there is a time for each type of call. Now that we've learned a little bit about calls, it's time to put those calls to work. We're going to take you out on a hunt with Ruggie Holloway and see what happens. I know you need to shoot him. When you're comfortable with Get him again, Rug. Mark started calling her. She kind of wandered left to right a little bit. Then, uh, once she made the decision, it was, uh, she came fast. Congratulations, Ruggy. That's the way to hold up under fire. And I mean serious fire. Now, calling's an awful, awful lot of fun. An awful lot of fun and it puts a lot of adrenaline in you a lot of things can happen but it doesn't always work and here's an example of a time when it didn't work and we didn't get to bear
piece of paper. What's that, bud? He's a pig. He's a brute. Let's go kill him. Gosh darn it. Yeah. We should be down there shooting, damn it. We should already be down there shooting. That bear had come out of the willows a little bit, but he was just too far out of range. And I'll tell you, it was something. He was lumbering, and he was a good one. I believe he was a booner. You know, he had a good one. Big, low, low belly and, and flat brow, tiny ears. We were excited as all heck, but I'm blowing at that guy, and all, all I managed to get out of him was a... Like, quit disturbing me, boy. And uh, he turned around and walked back in the bushes. You know, my guess is that, that that particular bear had already harvested. I say harvested, but he'd already taken his calf. And, uh, you know, he was just going back into the willows to, to get a hold of that calf and, and take it somewhere to eat it. Maybe it was eating it right there. Of course, Brent and I have been hunting that particular bear, and we've been hunting that bear hard, and, and we're hopeful that we get another opportunity at him. On behalf of Stockton Outfitters Guides, we'd like to thank you for watching. Hopefully, we'll see you out here in the Rocky Mountains next spring, chasing big bears. Hunt hard and be safe.